That is the Republican Party we have right now, one that is self-cannibalizing as we speak, one that is allowing the Chaos Caucus to undermine Congress's ability to do anything at all. So as President Biden calls on America to show its strength and its unity, as he calls on Congress to show the world American leadership, the Republican Party, the one that runs Congress, is stuck in a downward spiral. Joining me now is the emeritus scholar at the American Enterprise Institute and contributing editor at The Atlantic, Norm Ornstein, and Dr. Ray Smock, the former historian of the U.S. House of Representatives. Thank you both for being here. Dr. Smock, um, you and I haven't talked, and I, I would imagine that if I had a conversation with you, it would have been a neat quirk of history kind of conversation, tell me something neat uh, that I didn't know about Congress. This, there's nothing quirky or neat about this at all. Can you try and give us some context as to um, how unusual this is and how serious this could be? Well, it's about as serious as it can get right now, and it hasn't been this bad since before the Civil War. And we had uh, three uh, speaker contests then where where the ballots went on forever. One of them went on for 133 ballots over a two-month period, and uh, several others that were in lengthy terms of that kind. And, of course, the issue was the Civil War. And um, the fact that the Congress couldn't work very well and the fact that the Congress was reflecting the uh, disorder that was coming to the whole nation, and we know how we resolved that with the Civil War and 700,000 dead people. So uh, that's, that's, uh, that's the crisis of the past, and now we're in a new one. Norm, uh, you and I, I think it's been exactly 12 hours since we last spoke. Uh, yeah. Let's just talk about that. Dr. Smock talks about the, the reflecting the disorder and the disunity in the nation. I, I would say I, I don't think we're there. I don't think we're at civil war. And, and largely, this is still a fight amongst Republicans. It absolutely is. And we should note uh, here again, Ali, that this is a feature, not a bug, for the contemporary Republican Party. The only leader that they've had who managed to last without being forced out was Dennis Hastert, who is in prison as a sexual predator and a groomer, not a drag queen. Uh, the others were all forced out, going back 30-plus years. It is it's a Republican problem, but it's a problem that even goes beyond the leadership, the speakership. It's because we have a party that's basically degenerated into a cult, and governing is not a high priority for them right now. Many of these members, the uh, Chaos Caucus, the Nihilist Caucus, are perfectly happy not to have a House and have us careen towards a shutdown. And I'd make one other point. We have a visit coming up this week this coming week from our closest ally, or a very close ally, Australia, the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. He is supposed to address a joint session of the Congress. That may not happen because of this chaos, another embarrassment to the United States. Dr. Smock, what are the ways in which this resolves? And, and, and I know there are things that have been floated. One of these people could win. Uh, there's a bit of a problem in the Republican conference in that it used to be understood that if you won the election inside the conference, um, then everybody would support you, generally speaking, for speaker. That seems that that internal rule for Republicans seems to have been broken. So what did what in your sense are the logical, rule-based ways to move forward? Well, they're going to have to decide on a, a candidate. Otherwise, this is going to go on forever. Um, I'm, I'm sort of reminded of uh, what Kurt Vonnegut said. He said, the greatest fear is you wake up one morning and find that the country is run by your high school uh, class. And uh, <laughs> certainly the Republican uh, conference is, is running like that right now. Um, Ten candidates now. Uh, uh, we dodged a bullet when 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 uh, Jim Jordan was out uh, to have a, an election denier in that position, uh, someone who's also uh, currently trying to impeach uh, President Biden. Uh, it just doesn't make sense at all. It's almost like the world upside down. But this these people have the power of the purse, and that's Congress's role. And right now, the president is trying to uh, get uh, emergency uh, legislation. Uh, passed to aid uh, the Israeli conflict and and, and also uh, Ukraine, and there's no way he can do that until we get a speaker. And Norm, it would be normal for people to say this is a blustery political show, uh, hair on fire kind of discussion, but 
to, to Dr. Uh, Smock's point, there, there are a couple of wars going on at the moment. There are at least two or three opportunistic countries out there, Iran, North Korea, uh, and China, who may be looking to make trouble when, when America looks like it's temporarily disabled. There are actual real things that need to get done. So, you know, again, Dr. Smock laid out the civil war and how it led to 133 votes over a few months to, to get a speaker. We're, we're not at civil war in America, but there's actually a national security and a global security component to this that those the Republican conferences seems to be having trouble understanding. And let's not forget the other side of the Capitol, Ali. Ray is at the Robert runs the Robert Byrd Center at Shepherd University. Look at what the Senate has done. Senate Republicans have blocked our ambassadors to the vital countries in the Middle East, not just Israel, but some of the other countries in the area. They are blocking, uh, Tommy Tuberville is blocking the uh, really significant military leadership, uh, the chief of naval operations, for example, while we have battleships and others in the Middle East. Ah, we've just frozen uh, Norm. We didn't. It happened. We're going to get him back in just a second. Uh, Ray, let's, let's just expand on that point, that this is not just House dysfunction. There's a little bit of Senate dysfunction. It's just not getting the headlines at the moment. Well, with both parties in, in both uh, houses uh, in such close uh, uh, vote uh, situations, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, and, and Tommy Tuberville is uh, holding up uh, military uh, uh, nominations, for goodness sakes. With uh, two major wars going on in the world, and the United States uh, trying to figure out its way to to, to deal with both of them, uh, it's it's untenable that uh, that a senator would uh, uh, do that at a time like this. So uh, the Senate seems to be functioning. It's it's uh, uh, better better in in shape than the House is right now, but not much better uh, because uh, we still have uh, the Trump influence. Uh, the greatest demagogue that ever got elected president of the United States is still pulling a lot of strings in, in the Republican Party, and uh, that's not a good sign. Uh, Ray, let me ask you about two ideas that have been floated uh, out there. One is Patrick McHenry, who's the acting speaker at the moment. Um, uh, some people have ex uh, have recommended extending him to January the 3rd. Uh, so I want to ask you whether that's unprecedented and, and workable. And the other one is that if, uh, if a handful of Republicans voted present and every Democrat votes for Hakeem Jeffries, which is what's happened, uh, Hakeem Jeffries could be the speaker. Has that kind of thing ever happened? happened, where a member of the other party that's not in power becomes speaker? No, it's never happened. We, we did have two elections, again, before the Civil War, where the speaker's vote was decided by a plurality. They could not get a majority. And of course, again, you, you're dealing with a, a time when there were uh, several parties. The Republican Party was just getting started, just emerging. Uh, you had Democrats, you had Whigs, uh, you had uh, know-nothings. Uh, and so two elections were decided by a plurality where they couldn't uh, get a majority. And um, then once they decided on the candidate, the plurality candidate, uh, then the whole House voted uh, as a majority to elect that person. So those were two unusual elections. I don't see that happening uh, in this situation um, because if the <laughs> uh it could be that Hakeem Jeffries got would get the most votes, and, and he has been getting the most votes. Guys, thanks very much. We uh, apologize. Norm, we got you back just in time to thank you. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I'm not really worried, Norm, because you and I seem to talk on the regular. Uh, good to yeah. see you both. Norm Ornstein is a senior fellow emeritus at the American Enterprise Institute. Raymond Smock is a former historian of the United House of uh, U U U U U U House of Representatives and uh, a former staffer at the House.